Welcome back, everyone, to the Blazor Hybrid Beginner Series. I'm your host, James Montemagno, a program manager on the developer community team here at Microsoft. And we've already explored what Blazor Hybrid is and specifically how it works with WinForms, WPF, and .MAUI, which is what we're going to use today to build a hybrid application for iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. We also took a look at how to get set up and installed on both Visual Studio 2022 and Visual Studio Code. So that means no matter where you're developing, you have tools that are available to you to build great hybrid applications across all of these different operating systems. So now what we want to do is actually create our very first Blazor hybrid application. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to leverage Visual Studio 2022 to build out our application and deploy it to iOS, Android, and Windows. And I'm going to talk about how to get everything set up inside of our project, how to deploy it, and what's inside of it. So let's take a look. The first thing we want to do is launch Visual Studio 2022 and select a new project. Now here on the right hand side, you're going to see a project filter and you're going to might be a little bit different than mine. If you have all projects selected, you're going to see every single thing that's installed here. You can easily filter to Blazor Hybrid by selecting Blazor Hybrid. And this will be the .NET MAUI Blazor Hybrid app. So I'm going to select next and we're going to create a hybrid to do application. So let's call it hybrid to do app. There we go. Now I can also select the version of .NET. I'm going to choose .NET 8. And now this will create our entire project structure inside of Visual Studio. So here we can see that I have the hybrid to do app, which is a single project. And inside the CS proj, we see that it's targeting iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows as well. I'm going to go ahead and shut this CS proj. And if I do a drop down, we can see all of the dependencies that are here. So we can see that I am targeting .NET 8, I have iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows there because they're inside of our CS proj. Inside of our solution in our project, we can also see some things that are common if you've ever created a Blazor application before. So things like a dub dub root, which will host our CSS or any JavaScript files that we may have. We can see that there's a little open Ionic and bootstrap built right in. We can also see that there's some data. So here we have a weather forecast, a weather forecast service that's available to us. And we also have some pages. Now, in this case, our pages are Razor pages and specifically with Razor components. So here we have a page that's the root that says hello world. We have a fetch data that goes off and uses that weather forecast service. Here it will go ahead and let it load weather data and display it in a table. And we can see we're using our Razor right here and using C sharp to call off to that weather forecast service. And we have a counter page that will be a counter page. So for example, here it will say current count count has a button that says increment count, and we can increment the count by plus plus, just writing C sharp code. Now, additionally, since this is a .NET MAUI project, using Blazor Hybrid, it's configured for Blazor Hybrid, but it also leverages .NET MAUI itself. So here we can see that I have a platforms folder. Now, this gives me access to write platform specific code for Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows directly inside the project. And if I open it up, we can see that there's a little bit of Android code here. This is the configuration of the project. So here we have Android using statements. We have our activities in here. And the same thing is true here for iOS. We have our program file for our iOS startup code. Now, often you won't have to worry about this at all, but be aware that it's there in case you do need to access platform specific features. In a future video, we're going to see how to do that and also how to access cross platform APIs directly with .NET MAUI. Now, beyond that, .NET MAUI has a lot more built in for multi platform app development. Under resources, we can see things such as app icons, fonts that we might want to be using, images, raw assets, and splash icons as well. Now, some of these are used for the native platforms. Some of them are used when rendering native controls. You may not need to add specific things in here if you are accessing things from the Blazor Hybrid web view. You want to add those all into the dub dub root because that's where the Blazor Hybrid is going to be accessed. Now, beyond that, we also have a shared folder, which has our main layout and our navigation of our application. We also have an import, imports razor that's going to bring in all of our sort of global using statements here. And we have a few other main setup code. So the Maui program is sort of the program of your application. Here we can see it uses the builder pattern similar to ASP.NET Core. 
it configures the Maui app, it goes ahead and configure fonts, and then it will add a Maui Blazor web view, and it will also add debugging services if you're in debug mode. You can also use the built-in dependency injection service either in a .NET Maui like page or view model or directly in your Razor um, pages uh, with the built-in injection service. So here we saw the weather forecast service and we open up the fetch data page. We can see it being injected here. That's all built in automatically. Now you'll notice that there's some Razor here, some C Sharp and some XAML. Every .NET MAUI application has an app startup page, and we define some styles here. And again, this is for the .NET MAUI part of it. We can see if I go into this dropdown of app.xaml, we can see that a main page is defined. So again, this is the MAUI startup code. And here in the main page, we can see that we specifically are using this Blazor web view control. Here it has a name of Blazor web view, so we can access that from the code behind. It has a host page of www.root index HTML and a main razor component, which in this case is the main. Now, this is XAML setup. You can also do this in C sharp, but this is for all intents and purposes accessing the main component and putting it into a Blazor web view. Now, if I open up the uh, specific main, we can see that this is the router. And it's going to look for anything in our assembly for routing. And in this case, it's going to try to load the main layout. This uses the same defaults of a Blazor application that you may have created in, in the past, which here uses a main sort of navigation hamburger button flyout menu. All right, that's a full overview of everything that's built in. So if you're coming from the Blazor world, some of this is going to look familiar. If you're coming from the Maui world, this is going to look a little bit familiar, but mashed together because it's hybrid. If you're brand new, then this is going to be all brand new to you. And now you hopefully have a good grasp on this. All right, well, what about deployment? Well, if we zoom in here, we can see that under the debug menu, we have a few options. We're able to deploy locally to our Windows machine, or we can select an Android emulator, an iOS local device, as, such as the iOS device I have plugged in or we can connect to a remote Mac machine and access remote devices or remote iOS simulators. Now, built into tools, we can also see that there's Android and iOS. So for iOS, this will enable us to pair to a Mac or open device logs. Additionally, for Android, we see a full Android device manager, an SDK manager, different prompts, and more. So inside of Visual Studio, since it's an integrated development environment, we have access to all of these additional components. So if you don't have any Android emulators or Android devices, it's OK. You can open the Android Device Manager. This will pop up on your machine. And it will enable you to automatically create or launch Android emulators right from here. You can also deploy it directly onto an Android device by plugging it right into your Windows machine. And it'll just go ahead and deploy. All right, let's first just go ahead and deploy this onto my Windows machine. So I'm just going to hit debug. And what this is going to do is compile up a native Windows application using WinUI 3 and the Windows app SDK. It's going to go into a full debug mode of our application, and it will be contained and deployed onto my Windows machine. So this only takes a few seconds because it's just nice local development here. And we'll see it deployed uh, here and since we're using Visual Studio, we can use common features like Live Preview, Hot Reload, and a lot more. All right, here we are. Here we can see that I have my hybrid to-do application. We have that Hello World. We have our counter. We have Fetch Data showing us our weather forecast. Now, inside of Visual Studio, we can see that I actually have a live preview of the application running. So that's nice if I'm doing iteration on a laptop like I have here. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and close that down. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the application running again. And we can see that we have the counter here, home, and more. So when I click on this counter, it goes up. Let's take a look at that counter razor here. Here it is. All right, awesome. So here we have the current count counting up and doing more. I could go ahead and add more buttons in here. So if I wanted another button, for example, I could go ahead and hit this little uh, save, or I could hit the hot reload icon up here, and that will reload my running application. If I go back down to it, we can click over and see that now it is updated automatically. So I can click this one or this one automatically for me, which is nice. I can also go ahead and change it to plus 
equals 10, for example, I'm going to hit the hot reload button. And again, here it'll apply our changes. So now when I click on it, we can see that it automatically will update it by 10, just like that. I can go ahead and remove that other button, change it back to just plus plus, go ahead and hot reload that automatically. And here we're going to go ahead and click and refresh it, and we can see that it updates automatically for me, which is really, really nice. Get that productivity built in. You get that live preview, you get the application running right here, and you're ready to go. What about Android and what about iOS? Well, let's head back to Visual Studio and deploy it as well. So I'm just going to go from the drop down and I'm going to select my Android emulator that's running here. Now there's a few ways of Android emulators working. Um, mine here is running on top of Hyper-V, um, which is really nice because it enables me to do all my like Docker development um, and run my Android emulators directly super fast being accelerated by Hyper-V and my Intel chipset. There's also an Intel Hacksum as well, which enables you to install certain drivers that enable you to do different virtualization. But since this is an Android emulator, it's emulating your entire Android device and setup basically, right? So it's going to build up the entire Android package here and it's going to launch it on to an emulator. So let's go ahead and deploy it to Android. Now all I need to do from the drop down is go to the Android emulator and select my emulator. Now if you don't have one, it'll walk you through the process of creating one, but I have one up and running. So all I need to do is hit debug. Here I can open up my Android emulator and this is going to be my entire Android emulator. Now this is emulating Android and there's multiple modes that this can run in. Here I'm running on top of Hyper-V. So this is going to be a super fast emulator that's running on my machine here. I could of course also plugged in an Android device and got it up and running. Now here our Android emulator is running. I have a different view because the CSS is controlling whether the hamburger button is on the top or on the side or where it's at based on the different dimensions. And I can go into my counter, I can click and see that we're back to plus plus, or I could go to my fetch data and now I have all the data here. So this entire application is the Blazor hybrid application and I'm going ahead and I'm navigating around. I can use all the things that I'm used to. So here I have the live preview and I have my Android application inside of it here, which is really, really nice. So that's pretty awesome. All right, the last one here to think about is how do we um, actually deploy this to iOS? Now, there's a few ways of doing this. If you have an Apple developer account like I do, you can simply take your iOS device and plug it into your Windows machine. You can also come in to iOS and pair to Mac where you have Xcode installed in the simulators and this will install all the dependencies and do a remote compilation and deploy and show you a remoted iOS simulator directly on your Windows machine. Now I've gone ahead and signed in with my Apple developer account. So when I go from the drop down and see iOS local devices, I can select my device that's here. And this is my actual physical iOS device, which is pretty awesome. So all I have to do is hit debug. So now this is going to bundle up a full debug package for my application. So what this means is that it's basically taking my source code, it's going to interpret it inside of a bundle pretty much. So that doesn't mean I can take this and launch it to the App Store, but it will be installed on my device so I can test it out and get it running. So here we can actually see Visual Studio says, please connect the debugger by launching your application. So here it's actually up and running and going to launch the application on my device. So we can see it right there. So that's pretty cool, right? So this is now going to attach the debugger, start our hot reload system, and then it's going to give me all of the capabilities inside of Visual Studio that I just saw for Windows and Android. OK, cool. It's up and running. That's cool. It's running. I can go in. I can say fetch data, for example. I can see data on the screen. I also come back into Visual Studio and I can see my application with the live preview, which is really awesome. This enables me to be super hyper productive no matter if I'm building iOS, Android or Windows apps. All right. Now, the last question that you might be wondering is, what if I'm developing for Mac and I want to use Blazor Hybrid? Or for that, you're going to need to be on a Mac to bundle up a Mac application. But what we've seen so far is how to build our very first project with Blazor Hybrid, how to get set up deploying for Android, Windows, and iOS from our machine. And we've also talked through how to do further development for Mac using Mac and Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. 
All right. Now that we've got our project up and running, we're going to start to build out a real application. We're going to build this to-do application, the full user interface, and then start to access native APIs and share code with a Blazor web app as well. So stay tuned for more Blazor hybrid goodness on the Blazor hybrid beginner series. So stay tuned.